Welcome to this presentation on double level fixator assisted nailing for lengthening and deformity correction. The holy grail today in limb lengthening surgery is to be able to perform fully implantable automated self lengthening nails. All of us are in search of the grail, like the fit bone device, which is electronically controlled, or the precise nail, which helps us to correct to perform limb lengthening with a fully implantable device with the help of external remote controls. However, not of all of us are fortunate to be able to have patients who can afford these expensive devices. Not only that, these devices can also be used only to correct deformities of shortening only at And therefore, what should the rest of us do? Should we eat humble or should we seek to innovate and use methods that are easily available to us in the form of external fixation devices and the usual locking nails? So here we discuss fixator assisted nailing done at two levels in the same segment in which the external fixation device is used as an intraoperative alignment tool for the lengthening and for correction of the deformity. So the main aim is to reduce external fixation duration while performing limb lengthening surgeries or to completely do away with the need for external fixation when we need to perform deformity correction levels. Lengthening over nails has been first published by Bost in 1954 but chiefly popularized by Paley in 1997 following which <clears throat> several articles have come notably from Gordon Koshaglu and from our hospital as well in the year 2008. Lengthening nails is <coughs> reasonably easy when there are no deformities. However, when we need to perform deformity correction, the <coughs> special instruments are necessary to achieve. We need good full length. We need instruments for entry point accuracy. This is for the distal portal in the femur. We need straight rigid reamers straight nails instead of the usual curved nails and this is a representative set of all the instruments we use to achieve deformity correction and lengthening over nails has been described by Paley again and then Herzenberg, Koshaglu and Rosbrook in 2000. Now <clears throat> we have also performed lengthening and deformity correction as in this obese young adolescent who has genu valgum and three so we chose to perform a distal entry portal nail after external fixation pins have been passed posterior. Um, a nail is inserted and locked distally. An LRS fixator is used and a length is achieved um, with the fixator coming out in hardly six weeks to give the, pay, uh, the young lady a very good function and early recovery of nail. But this presentation is about double level correction using IM nails, which has so far not presented anywhere. So we are performing two discrete or different tasks in each segment. These may be needed if there is one obvious and one hidden deformity, or there are two obvious deformities in the segment. So let's see a few. This is a gentleman with a significant valgus deformity who presents to us at the age of 40 years with this significant valgus in the femur and the tibia. In the femur, there is obviously a valgus in the lower end. However, what's not so obvious is the procravatum deformity, which is more than the normal procravatum. So here is here are some pictures of the distal entry that we use after inserting external fixation pins posterior to the track of the intended nail. Over the guide wire, we put in instruments which help us to ream the back this is a guide wire the level of the osteotomy is marked then a device known as a cloward is inserted which is a thin walled reamer which goes over so we can accurately maintain the track and use polar screws to narrow the track and use external fixation pins as well as these polar screws to correct the deformity so here he is this gentleman with significant correction of his valgus in the lower femur with the osteotomy and there is another osteotomy which is performed at the upper level to correct the procurvatum which was a hidden deformity and not so obvious. This tibial valgus has been corrected with the elizabeth 
and here he is with full correction of the deformity. The x-rays on the right show the mechanical axis now passing perfectly. On the AP x-ray, you can see the valgus is corrected by this lateral translation of the distal fragment. And on the lateral x-ray, you can make out that the procrovatum has been well corrected at the level. This is an example of a young Harrison procrovatum deformities in both the lower limbs. The procrovatum in the femur is a little hidden, not too obvious. The procrovatum in the upper tibia is very significant. So she got a correction using an IM nail where two osteotomies were performed in the femur <clears throat> percutaneously with the nail having been inserted from the proximal portal. External fixation device was used intraoperatively to guide the correction. <clears throat> Here the, the intervening fragment was not fixed with uh, screws, there was no necessity because we had a large nail which gave good stability and it was fixed only at the upper and lower ends with polar screws to enhance the fixation. The varus and procurvatum in the tibia were corrected with the TSF fixator. Correction of the procurvatum is essential because the procurvatum deformity and can be very troublesome to walk. <laughs> Similar correction was achieved on the opposite side the only difference being that the intervening fragment in the femur on the right side was corrected with the help of a locking screw in the central fragment as well. You can see that the tibial deformity has been well corrected with the TSF with appropriate transverse fragment. And here she is at the end of her corrections with very accurate mm, mechanical axis passing through the knee. So we analyzed our patients and we found that the distribution of deformities was such that we had vast majority of patients with Paris and Procurvatum deformities and uh, the mechanical axis deviation in these patients ranged from minus 100% to about 110% like so and coronal plane deformity correction in these patients from a mean of 94 degrees of MLDFA to a mean of 89 degrees, which is fairly accurate. And these represent what we have done. This is an example of non shortening corrected with double level method, like so. This is a 26 year old with a non union after intermediary nailing with three shortening. So we performed a double level procedure. Here the nail was inserted from above. The non union site was brought out of varus and it was compressed with the help of locking bolts which are inserted in the center of the nail. A proximal corticotomy is performed and the nail is not locked at the proximal level. The LRS fixator helps to achieve the lengthening. In hardly a few weeks, the nail is locked proximally and the fixator is removed very soon so that we can achieve two tasks both at the same time with very little external fixation. So that this young person could regain his knee range of motion very soon. More. If there is a shortening, as in this gentleman who has a varus malunion and shortening of three, we performed a double level fixator assisted nailing in which the proximal corticotomy is for the lengthening and the distal corticotomy is used to correct the malunion. LRS fixator allows him ease of sitting in a chair or a stool and to resume his work as a software engineer. The fixator comes off in less than two months as the length and the nail is locked for him to get a good correction of his axis of the malunion as well as achieves. So we found in our analysis that the sagittal plane deformity was uh, a mean of uh, preoperatively 80 degrees that's procurvatum in many of our patients which ended up with 86 degrees as a post of And this is a further explanation of the correction of sagittal plane that we have performed. Shortening is seen in this uh, television actor who has polio and he has a fixed flexion deformity with some shortening. These are x-rays taken at the beginning to find out the true extent of the deformity and fit. This is Double level osteotomy has been done. At the distal femur, a supracondylar osteotomy has been performed with mild posterior translation of the distal fragment, and a proximal corticotomy has been performed to achieve length. 
the intervening fragment is fixed with additional bolts with specially drilled holes in a custom made the fixator is retained for a very short duration as soon as length is achieved at the upper corticotomy nail is locked and the fixator is removed the bone forms well and without any augmentation needed in terms of either bone grafting or bmps or bone bone marrow aspirate concentrates or any sim need and this is his so we achieved a mean of 3.6 cm of lengthening in, in and uh, an example of recurvatum and shortening this young lad has 9 cm of shortening with 60 degrees recurvatum and 30 degrees of varus in the so we chose to perform a double level correction of his femur with a proximally inserted nail proximal corticotomy for lengthening the distal osteotomy for correction of the recurvatum and varus the tibia lengthening was performed with the ilizar fixator the lr was on his leg you can see the nail has slid down from the piriformis fossa the length has been achieved it is locked and uh, the fixator comes off early in the femur allowing him to get a good range of motion of the knee within hardly a of the fixator removal we have carefully looked at the results of our patients and found that their sf scores sf12 and sf36 scores have dramatically improved and the asami scores which refer to the quality of results of the bone and the functional score has also been very good with a high percentage of them having excellent bone score by the asami criteria of instability in the ankle joint with shortening in poliomyelitis in a school teacher ordinarily to perform 4 cm of lengthening and an ankle fusion would require no less than 8 to 10 months of external fixator wear which can be cumbersome and may keep her away from her duties as a teacher so we chose to perform a double level correction using a distally inserted nail to perform arthrodesis of the ankle and subtalar joints in mild plantic plant flexion and a distal tibial corticotomy has also been length the fixator comes off really soon and here she is with an ankle which is in 5 to 10 degrees of equinus which is very useful for her to walk and to also stabilize her knee which is also weak due to poliomyelitis the fixator has come off in less than 2 months instead of staying on the limb for 8 and this is her uh, oh this is a video of her walking with the instability unfortunately so obviously this is a complex surgery of two levels of correction using i am nailing with custom made nails it is not without patients i would like to show you that a similar case of ankle fusion and lengthening in the tibia did not work out for this lady unfortunately because of failure of you know the The, the target of the lengthening in the tibia as well as the ankle fusion was achieved with the laser fixator so i would like to reiterate that these tasks can be performed with external fixation however the new method that we have used and have designed helps us to reduce external fixation time and is very beneficial for the patient to resume their activities here is this young lady who with cerebral palsy with a spastic uh, lower limb with varus procurvatum deformities we used an intermediary nail to correct the deformity at two levels however since the marrow canal was very narrow a 7 mm nail was used and due to her spas spasms due to her cerebral palsy fortunately the nail broke at the upper osteotomy so the solution for this again was to the ilizar fixator like so in order for her not only to correct the deformities but to also which she did in a further 6 months of external fixation even though external fixation wear may be prolonged we can achieve very high accuracy with the ilizar fixator however we have had to perform this rescue with the help of ilizar in only two of our 25 patients and the vast majority of them have benefited by this double level procedure of lengthening and deformity correction using im nails thank you for your attention